Oh, cheers. Well, he's going to moan, so we'll just take it. But, we didn't change the game like one bit. Yeah, but I think, I think, no, to be fair, when you go shouting, we've done. Right, I'll manage, none of you lot. Sorry, Bob. Half that is, lads, I'll tell you now. That's no good for me. Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. I missed the whole game. And, you know, and for all the tea in China, for every time I talk about the season, I forever think we're five points fucking clear, a game in end, right, and we were going to fucking win it, right? And there's no way, there's no way around that. You know, the bottom line is I'll, I'll forget all about it. I'll be abroad and having a vodka and tonic and, and fucking start telling someone, you know, because it's always there, isn't it? You can't get rid of that fact. You know, I mean, um, all the management team of volunteers. Um, I'm the biggest volunteer of all. I'm an investor. And... Um, so if we want to win and, and we get denied it, we're going to be bothered, you know? A couple of shots of you working, a bit of B-roll. Yeah. Two months on from the nullification of the National League South 2021 season, and Mark White is back in football mode. The Dorking Wanderers owner slash manager is preparing for the next chapter in the Dorking Wanderers story, starting with the reveal of four new signings brought in to boost his squad for the forthcoming season. The club were five points clear with a game in hand when the National League fell apart through a combination of Covid and questionable league management. As a result, Dorking are now pegged as the favourites to win the title, and Mark is keen to make sure they have a squad that can deliver on what has become a biannual routine of stepping up a division as he looks for his 13th promotion in 20 seasons. I decided to, to not stay at Ebbsfleet. Um, Mark got in touch with me to see if I'd come and have a chat with him. He made the decision pretty easy for me, you know, part-time at the moment, which enables me to do some more coaching as well as, obviously, like I said, num number one priority is football, don't get me wrong, but it just enabled that and everything all fit the bill, the ambition. Uh, so the club before this, I was at Chelmsford, uh, player manager there, so he was his first job. Before that, I was with Andy Hessenthaler at Dover, who okay. was, uh, was like a pit bull and, you know, really demanded a lot from you. Uh, Jay Saunders at Maidstone, um, again, very bit, a bit of a different gut manager to, to Hesse. But still quite demanding, and then before that, I was with a, a, a manager called Tommy Worrello who hung me on the hook once. <laughs> so, literally, yeah, I so didn't that figurative. no, 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 they, we have the hooks, and at Tunbridge, they're a little bit higher than what you would find normally, <laughs> and yeah, lifted me up, hung me on the hook. Do you get nervous about meeting a new team and having to settle in? Um, yeah, no, to, to, to be honest, a few years ago. Yeah, I, I, I probably would have done. Got a little bit nervous thinking, you know, going into a new dressing room where maybe you don't know anyone. Or, um, but obviously now with a, with a few years under my belt, um, you know, and sort of being around these the players, you sort of know you do tend to know people. Who and, are my son? <laughs> and you got you got him easing you into it as well. So I moved here at 15. So I'm uh, from Australia. So I moved here then. Um, so I'll come and sign for Brighton for two years. So I went, that's the reason why I moved over. Yeah, since I was at, since then I was at Brighton, got released and um, just been around non-league clubs like that. So the club's very ambitious and, you know, I have to say I'm ambitious as well. So it's uh, a good match, a good fit. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like they're the um, they're sort of hand in glove for signings, really. Two of these boys coming from full-time football at an age where they can still play full-time football. So they're coming here, it's not money. They're coming here, yeah, they're, they're on good money for... Um, you know, for, but, you know, same sort of money as any other good player in this division, but, but nothing like they could earn in full time. The first part of the year is who you're going to sign, who you're going to retain. Um, we've got a great side for this league. I don't want to talk about it, but you know, could it be a cup run? I've always said, look, when we get, when we have a cup run, it'd be big. It'd be Man United at home, third round proper. You know, when we have one, it'd be like, wow, we're waiting for one, and when we got it, we got it. Go back. Hello, David. Right, mate? I'm very well. Good. Are you well? Yeah, good. Just standing around talking about how many of these we need to replace. They're lucky because, you see, the manager is not going to get the sack. Mate, they can't stab me in the back. 
For the first training session of the season, the coaching team are setting the players up for the dreaded bleep test. I, I think Niall will win it by this year easily, to be fair. He'd, he'd have actually been in training for this for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. Are we, are we, is, there, is anyone not done this? I'll organise it, don't fucking worry. Has anyone not done this? Jokes, you know like the 16 coaches we got? Is there anyone that can make sure this is being done? If you're new, I know what you're thinking. What a shit show. Is my contract registered? Can I get out now? Yeah, but it is organised crime, I promise you. You know the score, so I'm only talking to the new boys to a degree, but like we've mastered the art of fucking enjoying football, celebrating and fucking winning. We've mastered the art of it. The record book tells you that, the fucking results tell you that. So I'm not one of the managers that has to stand up and blag you, because you fucking know that. So what you've got to do, Charlie Hester Cook, is trust me, okay, trust everything we do, because we know what we're fucking doing. What you've got to do is stay fit, because guess what's going to happen, right? There's going to be some of you that think you're shoo-ins that have a bad pre-season. Some of you that think I might be on the fringes that have a fucking great one. So there'd be, there'd be people that do well, people that don't. 10% of you will be injured, factually, by the end of pre-season. Two or three of you will be a write-off for three, four weeks. So buying into all the stuff Louis does, the coaches do, recovery, Make sure you're aiming that fucking 10%. But it all starts now. We've got to show some class and we've got to go again. But let's not be complacent. That's my biggest fucking thing, fitness-wise or mentally. Okay, good. guys that went out first. Cheers, Carl. Love it, you. Yeah, love it. Once the keepers go, you feel like you can drop out. You know, football such a big way of life, isn't it? Whether you play any level. So tonight, what you saw was just everybody, coaches, players, physio team, management team, you know, supporters even that came down. Just glad to be getting back in the saddle. And from our part, my job now is to get their head right um, for a big campaign. Yeah, I feel great to be back after the long break, basically. So it's been longer for you than most people, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I couldn't wait to be back on the pitch. It's after the broken foot, obviously, take extra two months compared to others. I finished a bit earlier. But on the other side, it gave me extra two months to be a, get a fitter. And so I always welcome to new keeper. There is always to take something for someone else to come on. Definitely looking forward to work with Lee as well and see what I can improve and take from him. It's Hayden from Kingstonian. Just coming over, mate. How many players have you got, Hayden? 19. Short as fuck, man. Six out. How can you have six out for a game? Yeah, six. Unbelievable, mate. Well, obviously, yeah, Phil Park. It's not the six are out. It's the fucking fifteen that are playing that's worrying in me. You know. We've <laughs> got, well, got one new player. Don't you? But Bobby Joe. Oh, is that all? I'm Hayden. I'm the manager of Kingstonian. And um, you seem to be friends with Mark. How long have you known Mark? Yeah, I've known Mark a long time. I've known Mark since he was in the. I think it was in the Sussex League. Uh, we've become really good friends. Uh, think the same way about football. To be back in amongst it, seeing people again, kicking balls around, seeing the team again. Do you get excited? Do you get nervous? How do you feel? I love it. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that I absolutely love it. I, I don't get nervous, <clears throat> but I get really excited. You know, I, I, um, I manage this club. I've been involved in non-league football at this level and above for 20 years now. And I do it because I love it. Get away from the pressures of work, pressures of life in general. What do you do when you're not involved with football? I manage a chauffeuring business. Uh, so in the chauffeuring business, we, our clients are quite high profile people, a lot of Premier League footballers, uh, people in the music industry, uh, some celebrities. So they keep me on my toes. Right, boys. 
Back again, yeah? Come back for more? You look fucking interested. <laughs> Is anyone fucking bothered or not? You just want to watch England tonight, yeah? Should we start drinking now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to see us all again, isn't it? This could be us for 11 months. We might be sat here. Won't it, won't it feel fucking weird in 11 months to be sat here going for that last game going, I can't wait for a break. Why don't I feel fucking yeah, weird? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's not been like that. Um, really difficult today. Um, what I'm going to ask you is what we need to know what we're going to do, me included, to, to improve us. Yeah? Um, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Is, is what can we do to improve us? Goldie warm-ups, goldie training, cu uh, club dead balls, defensive warm-ups, striker warm-ups. You know, all the things me and Dino do. So we've got to make sure we are trying to take that forward. That's what we've got to do. Try and take it forward. We don't want to stay the same. We've got to keep improving, yeah? We need during close season to add, look at the dead balls and maybe, we need, I think we need to add in a free kick for sure. Um, um, yeah, just address. But we have got good continuity of them dead balls that we're doing. But I wanted to make sure, I really want us as a unit, and I said this on the message, to try and, arrest that problem that every club has, which is second half of friendly, is just being shit. You know, I really want to arrest that. Like, I think it's really easy. I remember the boys at Horsham last year. In the first half, we were like fucking unbelievable. And the other boys just sat alongside the hoarding, went on and just looked like they couldn't be asked to be there. So we want to make sure we give a good account, don't we? You know what I mean? But, you know, welcome back to football. Highs and lows. Sat in here at the end, big emotions. Waking up tomorrow, your star striker broke his fucking leg. That's football, isn't it? Yeah, but you know what I mean? You're going to be there. I mean, even when I went on Friday, uh, Thursday night, I'm thinking, fucking, here we go. You know, three, you know, two hamstring injuries. Fucking COVID on Friday lunch. Um, here we go again. So Thursday, did they say you had to give them a bit of a rollicking on Thursday? Yeah, strategical rollicking. You know, going, going through the motion. Football's fine margins, isn't it? So um, doing the pattern and shape and about five or six weren't really that switched on up top. Um, doing things a yard behind, mentally a yard behind where there should be, just things like receiving the ball, body shape, next pass, information. So yeah, just had a, just give them a little warning shot. Do you get a buzz now that you're back playing again? It's been a few months, it's been longer than usual. To be honest with you, I'll have a buzz when, uh, when, I, when, when we score one of our back to front goals and, and uh, in front of the crowd and I think, yeah, we're there now. It's, 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 um, we, we've got to go again. So I'm, I'm in that sort of uh, protective mode where I'm just, I'm looking around the changing room thinking, right, who's with me, who's not? Who's completely with me? Who, who, who is, but they're not completely tuned in? And it's just trying to drag players in the right direction. So at the moment, I'm more minded to uh, want to get performances. Really. In the back of my mind, honestly, I'm thinking, fucking hell, um, if we, uh, we get beat today, it's going to fucking ruin tomorrow morning for me. You know, but I want that, do you know what I mean? I want, I'd rather have every fucking morning ruined than, than have the last year off, do you know what I mean? So, you know, it's just all those dynamics, Rich. Uh, winning leagues and stuff like that, it's, there's probably a million meta decisions that go into playing a whole football season and people don't always realise that. And, uh, um, yeah, but, but we've got a great bunch of lads here. We've got a really good bunch of lads. Like, they play exceptional football and that was only about, you know, 16 weeks ago. So, I, I want us to get back in the saddle and then, uh, and then my uh, tentativeness, my anxiety, if you like, will disappear. But we've got work to do. <laughs> um, just spotting British body language, like literally, like, fuck me, do I have to be here? Um, right, all starts again, lads, yeah? I said to the management team, I said, can you imagine that feeling in 11 months when we have the last team talk in 11 months, by the way? That's when it is. When we have that last team talk, like, I'm looking at Prize thinking she's leaving me. When you have that chat, and you go, yeah, we're done. And you're like, oh, fuck me, I need a break. That is a weird feeling right now to think you need a break. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's been a long time. So it all starts for us, yeah? Obviously, it's all about fine margins. 
and all the uh, shenanigans are going to start. We're going to get people that have great games, bad games, you know, bad discipline, great standards, you know. We're going to try and, you know, do everything we can to try and get everything right from today. But listen, I'm kind of, I'm in a good mood today, yeah, and um, I'm looking forward to you playing, to be fair. I'm not going to uber judge the performance um, as long as the uh, will and desire is there. Just want us to get our pattern right. And they fucking can't wait to play you today. They cannot fucking wait. What you've got to fucking do is make sure you're ready to play this game. The only thing that will be a problem to me is application. Nothing else would be a problem. I want to try and close the gap between these, these pre-season friendlies, the world over, they're a nightmare between first half, second half, aren't they? I want to try and close the gap. I've picked about four boys in the second 11 today, at least, that would be in the first 11 if we were starting. But I want to mix it up. I've been doing this a long time, so I do rate myself with pre-seasons. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for partnerships to, de to develop. I'm looking to see people in certain positions. So between the next eight games, you just have to trust me in what we're doing, okay? Right, listen, I'm excited to watch you play. I really fucking am. They're gonna press the fuck out of us, aren't they? Listen, they're gonna play 3-5-2 or 4 2 three, one or a variation of that. Yeah, 3-5-2, where's the over though? Someone shout quick. Yeah, so if they play 3-5-2, then we know uh, Slav walks, it's a 4v2. Yeah, easy. Don't I overload you, loads of info there, lads, but I'm really excited to see you play, to be fair. Make sure the warm-up replicates uh, the match. You've all got shirts. Let's get moving, yeah? Dead balls in a bit somewhere. Well over a year has passed since Meadowbank welcomed supporters into the stadium, so their return is a bit of a bugger for a bunch of amateurs because they really get in the way. On you go, Brixie. Dorking get into their stride fairly quickly against Kingstonian. A lack of match fitness is immediately countered by the presence of the crowd, but it does soon become apparent that the players may take some time to get back into the rhythm that their manager demands. Start again, start again, start again. Good, relax! Bash, go back and get it, Bash, go back and get it, Bash, get it back, Bash! He's tucking in. Relax! Ten minutes in and Dorking launched their first back-to-front move. Matt Briggs drives at the Kingstonian midfield before playing in Nick Wheeler. It would appear Dorking aren't moving the ball anywhere near quickly enough for their manager's taste. Play early! Go shallow! Just go shallow! Wes! Wes! Shallow! Chase! Briggsy, hi, come on, son. Let's go. Do it early! And it's hard to imagine the referees have looked forward to returning to officiate Mark's team. Ref! 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 When you stop the ball, you're supposed to stop the fucking game. No, it's just stupid! You're supposed to stop the fucking game! Nick Wheeler may have been one of the top performers at the bleep test, but even he's struggling to find match sharpness. What's he done there? Loose touches and wayward passes are seeing both sides seed possession, although Dorking do have the midfield crunch to get the ball back. Someone always has to take things too far. This side! This side! This side! One more! One early! Fuck off now! Run him now! Run him! Show him up! Run him! Run him! Run him! Still, Matt Briggs is looking lively and he very nearly plays in Nar McManus. Slav's perceived lack of urgency is clearly winding Mark up and he reacts as if he's goading the predator himself. Do it soon! Soon! Do it now! Now! Waiting for him to get in. Three months away from the dugout has increased Mark's vocal output today, and he's once again dictating the corner routine, even though set piece Maestro Dukes has it all planned out. No short one of you! Bob! Bob! Go and get it! Sorry, I always do that. It's a game of few clear cut chances, and every now and then Kingstonian remind their host that they too can be a threat. Sort of. When the away side do open up Dorking, Matt Briggs comes to the rescue. It takes over half an hour for Dorking to muster a threat on goal. James McShane catches his opponent sleeping and Jason Price sets up Wes Fogden. Oh. 
when Jason Banton does get into a good position, Dan Gallagher somehow gets away with this approach to tackling. The game's beginning to pick up pace, and Dorking forced the best opening of the game just before half time. Goalkeeper Rob Tolfrey does brilliantly to tip Nick Wheeler's shot over the bar. From the resulting corner, the increasingly influential Bobby Joe Taylor has a drive from distance. Right, boys, down on, come with me. Send them all, send them all in, yeah? Right, listen, that was, that was fucking beyond average. Don't go out there now. Do not go out there now and have a slow start. Make good decision, make them quickly. Don't be drawn into the long one the whole time, but it is there. But when it's there, you go shallow. It's there straight away. Don't fuck about. Make your mind up who's going in for it. Don't just both loiter, one go like that. And during the whole game, play nine and ten, alternate, whatever. Yeah? Jimmy, skin the blood, OK? Oh, cheers. Further ahead of team torment. So then you three were almost like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to muzzle, so we'll just take it. But we're so ridiculous. Yeah, we're we didn't change the game like one bit. Yeah, but I think, I think, no, to be fair, when you go shout, like we've done. Right, I'll fucking manage, none of you lot. Sorry, Bob. Fucking wank half that is, lads. I tell you now, that's fucking wank. That's no good for me. Jake's way below average, okay? No, average at best. Average at best. No good, Nicky. Poor. Dan, information had to be louder, louder. Average performance. Listen, right? It's the first game we get that. Bobby Joe above average, 100%. Composed on the ball. Not bumming him up. He's new, composed. Been here two minutes, knows how we want to play, relaxed on the ball, yeah? Okay? Listen, I know it's the first game. That's fine. That's fine. It's the first game, so we've got to get a load of that out of our fucking tank. But you've got to remember the levels we're trying to fucking get to, right? The levels we're trying to get to. Just keep the ball moving. Nicky, that side, keep the ball moving, man. Too many touches. Touch, 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 touch. Fucking touch play, right? It's always closed off. If, we, if we're going, this is the ball. If we're going bosh, bosh, what do you think is going to happen here behind you? What do you think is happening? It's like you've only got, you're always closed off. So your instant thing is touch play. Don't even fucking bother thinking about anything else, right? The more touches you have, the more it gets closed off, right? Pretty to be fair, you've done an all right job with that the other side. Touch and your movement on the ball. So you've touched, come inside, your next ball's straight, right? Slav, decision making, just, I know it's first game, quicker. Right, maybe training with fucking quicker. Everything's quicker. But listen, first game back, it's going to be rusty. That's how it's going to be. Right, that's how it's going to be. Okay, it's going to be rusty. The pitch ain't playing great. I get that. Right, but let's have no excuses here. I want a fucking good second half. I want to come in winning the game because that's what matters. With over half the team switched around, there's a bit more zip in the opening quarter of the second half as Dorking pushed the visitors back. Bob, just watch it for like five minutes in the game. Obviously, there's a lot of covering Sammy. There's a lot of yeah, sitting of in, sitting in, sitting in, getting the ball, yeah? Okay, trying. Alfie! Just mix up coming in and going back again, yeah? Bobby Joe's promising first half performance will see him return to the fray, while fellow debutant Callum Keeley is doing his best to make his mark up top. When the ever reliable Wes Fogden links up with Rutherford, Keeley needs to show his target man potential. Skin him! Lee Worgan, meanwhile, isn't being given enough trouble by Kingstonian in order to make an impact. One man who is catching the eye is Jimmy Mewitt, the white man who, arguably, is owed an expensive coat and has a tendency to light up any friendly he plays in. At the risk of this episode turning into the Jimmy Mewitt show, there are a few highlights to bring you that are remotely as exciting as the wingers surges forward. Go on, Jim! On your own! Go on, Bobby, run the ball! Run the ball, Bob! Go on, son! 
The return of Bobby Joe Taylor to the pitch helps Wanderers find a late burst, and it's not long before he's teaming up with Mewitt too. With only a minute left on the clock, Niall McManus plays in Mewitt one last time. Go on, Jim! We've got a pen. How long ago? Great, Dan, you've got a great side well there, done, mate. Well done, well done, Wolves. Well done, mate. Brilliant, Jimmy. Best player, second half. Well done, mate. You look brilliant. Yeah, tell you what happened was, you had a flying start, no, no, and then, yeah. then you started being That's a bit too unselfish. Yeah, you, up a little bit, yeah so but you, like, you, had a, you had them on toast. No, yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, thinking, yeah, no. do you know what? Nick it past them, get shots off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, for me, honestly, one and a half, two out of ten across the 90, I thought really poor. Cal, the only thing you've done well was that goal. Too poor. Hold up players, fucking dog shit. Alfie, um, great endeavour, um, just not quite smart enough. When, when you've got a winger running at you, you know, the way we play really, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're going to make the box, we're going to go around the corner, but not just be static and then just receive balls. And Jimmy's like, Jimmy's had, a, I mean, Jimmy, I thought he was our best player second half. Jimmy's had a blistering start. We can see he's got the bloke on toast and we don't really read what's going on. We want him, you know, you've got to read what's going on. But, you know, what we saw today was the difference between football fitness and fitness. That's, that was the difference we saw. That's what we saw today, 100%. Um, which is good, that's what pre-season's for. But um, I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm disappointed with the global football sharpness in the side right now. And then sometimes we replace that with a little bit of a moan and that. But the communication and fitness were the two things I wrote down. Communication was dog shit. That quite often is the case when the fitness levels and the sharpness ain't great because sometimes you're more fixated on yourself than you are getting yourself in that place where you need to be. Right? Next week it'd be a very mixed team again. As we get nearer, we'll start to think about it, yeah? But I, the good thing is I know that you lot, 100%, well, no, like me, I know Baz will think, like me and, and the senior boys, like me, I know that you lot will think, yeah, fuck, we've got a bit of work to do there. So that's a, that's a really good thing. That's a really good thing. We know we've got a lot of work to do, all right? So that's where it is. Please make sure, don't put shit on the floor without a gun in the bin and put the gear in and we'll see you Tuesday, okay? Are you genuinely surprised by anything today, or was that to be? No, no, I, I am surprised actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought we would. Um, I thought we were further ahead than that. I think they did as well. Um, I think um, the uh, the early sort of praise and, and my feedback to them that they're fit as butchers' dogs and sharp and unbelievable and could play a league match tomorrow was was wrong. Um, I got that wrong. So maybe they thought they was further forward than what they were, but that's good. It's good to identify we're not because all the complacency gets removed after one 90 minute game. Um, and uh, we, uh, we plan this week for the next one. We've got eight games, a long time. We're going to need, you know, a good three or four of those by the looks of it. Um, did you feel that buzz of, of having the fans there and being back in your, in your position again? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, it almost felt like it was unnatural for them as well. It, was, it, it seemed... Uh, it felt quite like a tepid atmosphere. Like it, it felt a bit like a bit of a pre-season atmosphere, to be fair, you know. But it's it's it, all of it getting back into society, isn't it? I mean, that is literally what it is. It's, it's new for everybody. It's new for the supporters and all the people that come down. I just really appreciate it. And you know, from both clubs and, and Kingstonian, there are plenty of people here. There's ground hoppers here. I can't remember the last time I got booed off or the crowd started shouting my name or singing a song about me, thinking I'm 18 years old, and you know. Um, See, I've not experienced hardly any of that. Yeah, there's loads of that. Yeah, fans, so loads of that. Loads of that. A lot of that. Yeah, there was a, there was a game. I love our fans. There was a game famously in the rain against Slough, um, where after the game, I, I famously told them all to f off and not bother coming back. 
<laughs> because we was and I, to be fair in hindsight I don't blame him for going home we was we was dreadful got beat 5-3 down here and there was a massive storm and everyone just went at the end but I took it personally that they left before me <laughs> we need the supporters we need the supporters as much as um, you know that they, they enjoy coming down here it's great to see that, that you know familiar faces today you know and, and then as chairman owner I have to have one eye on security you know, even before it started today, I'm like, right, you know, the security, have they been here before? We always ask for continuity with the security guards to get to know supporters. They're brand new. That's wrong. This is wrong. I have all those dynamics as well, you know, um, to look at. I was looking at the queues um, in the uh, the um, catering units today and thought, blimey, they're big. Why are they so big? You know, like, so um, it, it, for me, the fans coming back without the fans, as much as I miss them dearly, um, it made me a lot easier for me to focus on the football. To be quite frank, I, I get a buzz when I get a buzz when we score last minute winning a league match, FA Cup match. You know what I mean? That's a, been around doing it a long time now, so I want to get buzzed. I hated winning that game. Hated every bit of it. Um, fucking winning one 0 when you shouldn't really didn't really deserve to win the game. Um, on the balance of play, probably a draw. You know, um, don't like them thinking they've done well. You know, so I've judged them. I've scored them a one and a half out of ten today. Um, and one of those is for being here. So um, the, the half is for the performance, but it's, it's an honest assessment. Do you know what I mean? We've got a lot of work to do. We read every comment that you post. So please give us feedback. Let us know what you think about the show, what you'd like to see and what you enjoy most and what you enjoy least. I mean, that'd help. I don't like reading it, but I suppose I have to.